Hello, after three days of national mourning, huge crowds have attended the funeral of the country's top general, Hassem Soleimani. The crush of the crowd was so great that a number of mourners were killed in a stampede. Iranian media are now saying as many as 40 people have died, more than 200 others injured. 62-year-old General Soleimani was killed in a US drone attack on Friday at Baghdad International Airport. His burial in his home city of Kalman has now been delayed due to that stampede. Well, the commander was, for many Iranians, a hugely iconic figure who saw him as a future president. It's still unclear when Iran will exact the severe revenge it has promised for America. But a top Iranian security official said Tehran was considering 13 revenge scenarios. Born to humble beginnings, Soleimani emerged to lead the elite Quds force and masterminded Iranian foreign policy across the Middle East. He's credited with turning the Syrian civil war around when President Bashar al-Assad was on the brink of defeat. Well, despite the strength of feeling in Iran, Donald Trump has been unrepentant. He insists American lives have been saved and that Soleimani was plotting fresh attacks. Well, a senior, a senior Iranian uh, commander, Hossein Salami, has threatened revenge for the killing. Speaking at today's funeral, he suggested uh, General Soleimani would be more dangerous to America as a martyr. We say to our enemy, we will take revenge. We will burn the places they love if they make another move. They know where those places are. Well, let's uh, go live uh, to Baghdad. I can speak to uh, Feras Kelani from BBC uh, Arabia. Uh, Feras, just looking at the coverage coming out of Iran, has that been followed closely where you are, given the Shiite support in Baghdad? Uh, well, act actually, it's gone over the last two days here in Baghdad. Uh, according to what we understand uh, from some of the uh, Shia militias uh, here in, in the capital yesterday and today, I, to a lot, I spoke to a lot of them, and it seems like that there is a meeting will be held uh, in the next 48 hours in Tehran for these forces with the new Quds force leader uh, uh, to discuss the revenge. But at the same time, uh, as I understand from one of them, one of the Iranian-backed militias here, that there is a decision taken first to give an opportunity now to the political track. They, uh, they, they are pushing the Prime Minister Adi Abdel Mahdi to ask the, Amer the, the, the U.S. officially to remove their troops according to the accord between Iraq and, and, uh, and uh, the U.S. And uh, they will not do anything. They will, will, will not respond now for, uh, for uh, Soleimani's or uh, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis' death, uh, at least in the next few days. This is what we understand from uh, all of them, that the decision was taken to give, uh, to give the opportunity for the political track these days and to, to wait and see. But at the same time, in the meeting in Tehran, they're going to put a plan what they're going to do in the next few days if the Americans refuse to, to, to uh, remove their troops from, from Iraq. Uh, and there's confusion, we understand, also in, in the White House about quite what's happening in terms of scaling down the presence there. Just explain, though, for us, the sectarian problems here for Iraq, once again put in the, at the focus of, of the regional tensions here, because there are strong sectarian reasons not to support the, the Iranian uh, control and presence uh, over the current government in Baghdad as well, aren't there? It, it's not that much big problem now, but you know the Sunni refused to uh, the, the Sunni and the, the, the Kurds here in Iraq refused to the decision which is taken by the parliament, by, uh, supported by the Shia blocs, to ask the Americans to leave the country. So there is a big problem because in the Sunni areas, you know there is a lot of uh, problems. ISIS is still, still everywhere. The Kurds want, uh, want the, well, the Americans to stay, and they invited to to to, to uh, even to to give them more uh, uh, bases or. Uh, to bring more troops. So this, this is a, a big problem. But it's not reflecting in a sectarian way until now, at least. The country is united. Uh, let's be clear in this. The Shia are united behind, behind the uh, uh, prime minister now to support him to ask the Americans to leave. But there is a big problem with the Sunni uh, um, uh, member of parliaments and the Kurds. They refuse this. This is the situation. But it's not... We, we cannot say that we return to the, to the 2004 or 2003, the Syrian problem. At that time, it was very, very big. Until now, we are not 
we, we, we didn't reach that point. Okay, Faris Kalani in Baghdad, thank you very much indeed.